you have the metal to make metal, so metal. If there's one thing I've learned about true metallic metals, it's that like the teacup you leave beside your brush mug, it just tastes better with a normal paint. Whether it be a wash or a colored base or even a mix of the two, metallic, true metallic, really needs a helping hand from some regular pigments. Whether it's to add rust or grime or to tint the colors or even just to control the sparkle. And I've got three ways to get that pigment peanut butter into your metallic chocolate. Serving up the model for this week is One Page Rules with their tennis ball. I mean Duchies of Vinci Automata Brutes. Despite my little joke there, I'm actually quite excited to paint one of these guys. They give me the feel of a barrel golem because of the wood base that they have, but updated and mechanized. I'm going to be adding color to all the different metallics around this guy in three different ways starting with the joints and gears that make up the working parts of him. Many silver pigments have pretty good base coating potential. They're much like the gray of metallics. So to base coat the gears and internal structures of this snowball, I'm going to use a type of silver from scale 75 that actually has a tiny bit of yellow tint to it. Here I have some normal silver, just so you can see what I mean. With this, I'm going to use it to base coat the gears and rods, anything that isn't a plate-like structure. This color will be quite opaque over a dark gray primer, meaning it'll only actually need one coat as well. To start with the washes, I want to do a really light one, something just to bring out a bit more of that yellow. So using a raw sienna, which is a yellowish brown, I mix a tiny bit into some medium and thinner. With this wash, I want to tint the metal some, but I also want to make it pretty simple going on. So that's why I use very little pigment, so I can still cover it quite generously with the wash. Once it's dried, I want to get to the heart of what I'm doing. I imagine Duchies of Vinci are quite up to date with their machines, which means it wouldn't make sense to give this guy rust and corrosion. That just wouldn't have happened by now. So what color should I be adding? Well, it seems to me a well-oiled machine needs some oil and grease. So using the same mix of raw sienna, thinner and medium, I add a bit of a reddish brown ink and a bit more sienna to have those pigments become more dense in the mix. Then using this, I'll carefully layer it along the openings and joints of the gears, places where grease may gather visibly, also placing grease stains in random places as though they may have been a bit untidy when putting it together. Now for the oil, and I mean that quite literally. I've never done an oil wash before, even though I have all this stuff for it. So it's time to go on a little painting adventure with me and give it a shot. I've got some student grade oils here I got for pretty cheap, just to try once upon a time to see if the process of oil paints for miniatures was worth the hassle to me. I know other painters have had a lot of success with it, but I found it just wasn't for me. However, when I experimented, I never did an oil wash. I get a bit of the black and the brown in this kit. I don't want a pure black since I feel like oil stains would have a bit of a color to them, not just a pure black. Then I mix in quite a bit of the thinner. As far as I've seen others do this, the key is to use the thinner to get the oils to a wash consistency so that it doesn't take the linseed oil in the paint forever to dry. Then using a completely separate from my acrylics brush, dab it around the rims of things. It should settle into them, though I won't mind a few stains here and there on flat surfaces, because again to me that would just be a nice texture and exactly what I'm looking for in a well-oiled machine. Once it dried, I could barely see some of the oil stains as it had settled into the grooves and spread out so much, so I might have needed to add a bit more pigment. But since I'm going for a clean look, this seems fine to me. Another way you can manipulate the look of your metallics is a color base coat. By altering what's under the metallics, you can change the lightness and hue of them to a degree. So for his white gold armor, I'm going to start with a nice dark brown base, using this to get most of the orb's body, but also a few plates along his arms and legs. Since I'm going to have a third metallic, I'm going to hold some of these back for the final technique. And since this was a little patchy on the large flat surfaces, I added a second thin coat to make sure it was all even. To go about changing the hue a bit around the shaded areas, I'll be using a dark or phthalo blue. Over the brown, it should darken up those undersides of the armor. Don't be too worried about making a solid gradient here, because most of this is getting covered by metallics. 
but it is a good time to practice fading and gradients, since any mistakes are getting covered up. I like to dampen my brush with medium and water, then just take a dab of the raw paint from the tube, and starting at the darkest point, draw the pigment outwards while diluting it with the clear medium in the brush. The next undercoat layer is a bit of an optional one. Mostly it'll be the brown and blue shades that will make the difference, so I'm going a bit overboard here. A bit of white into the brown so I can pick out some highlight areas on these rounded plates. Stippling is a pretty simple way to grow a highlight outwards, adding dots to your start point and just poking in circles outwards until it's big enough. Though layering some of the color in, then glazing around the edges of it also works. And since this doesn't need to be perfect, it's the best time to practice. This wasn't dark enough at the start for me, so I also did another layer with a little bit more white added. To start with the actual metallics, I'm going with a mid-range gold. I'm going to be aiming for a white gold I had done on a test city guard for the same army that I really liked, which was some gold over a dark brown base. Check and check. But seeing as how I want a bit more of those colors to poke through, I'm adding some medium to dilute out the metallics a bit. Using a large brush, I coat everything like it's a whole other base coat again, even around the rivets and the like. Once that's dry, some of the brush strokes seemed a bit too visible for my liking, so added some more medium into the mix of metallic, and use a large flat brush to coat the most offensive areas. Since I'm not too worried about edges, by using a large brush like this, a large area can get done in a single swipe and should abet the brush strokes a bit. So I've got the gold, now I just need the white part of white gold, and for that I'm using a medium silver. Once again, mixing in some medium to keep it a bit diluted. Using my normal large brush, I layer this on top of the gold, but keep the edges clear, and on the more shady side of the model, reduce the area even more so that it covers roughly the same as the lighter coats of brown I did earlier. So even though those highlights are kinda hard to see now, they were at least good practice for where these highlights should go. Some of the silver areas were a bit thin as well, so to add a bit of texture and coating, I did some stippling in places I thought needed a bit more shine to them, though the reflection coming from my lights is plenty shiny too. I feel like I've gone a bit too heavy in some areas and I could start again with some brown and blue back in, but for now I don't think anyone's going to notice unless I tell them, so shh. Since I've already shown off how to wash metals, I'm going to do a bit of a repeat of that here using a mix of the brown and blue to make a darkish brown off hue. The rivets and armor gaps need a bit of separation, and this is what I'm using to do it. Since washes are really good at pooling around nubs like rivets, and can also do a little bit of glazing along the way to fix a few of those places I went a bit heavy handed in, bringing in some of those shadows back. Lastly, what's a metallic without a sparkle? Using the lightest silver I have that isn't a white metallic, you can see the difference between this one and the last one I used, I use a really fine brush for a bit of edge highlighting, just sparingly around the sharp edges of his face, some of the gaps between his armor, as well as along the sharp edges of the arms and a few of the more prominent rivets. I'm tempted in a few spots to paint reflection lines with this, but seeing as how he's an orb and I tend to go overboard, I stop myself from doing so. The color that shows up frequently in my other Vinci models is a red, so I wanted to see if I could do a red metallic, since, well, I happen to have a red metallic. Normally when I darken a red I use a green, so that's what I'm trying here. Mixing metallics into color pigments is an in-between of the last two methods and a good way to base coat particularly thin metallics. Let's say you've got a gold that doesn't cover well, but a brown that does. Starting with a mix of the two is a better way to base coat. But as I'm finding out here, metallic, even if it has its own color, doesn't mix the same way as the same color pigments. So this is far more green than an in-between, but I'm pressing on with it. By gradually mixing in more of the metallic into a pigment base, it gradually increases the amount of sheen that metallic is going to have. In this case, it also finally changes the color a bit more towards the red metallic. So I do a pretty solid layer of this over the last layer, but leave the shadows and valleys around rivets and ridges, as well as fading the color up from the shadows a bit. At this point, I was starting to feel like the red pigment on the model wasn't the same as what I was seeing in the bottle, so I added some red ink to help it along. The ink will coat the metallic in a bit more of the red I'm after, but will still be transparent to the layers under it. For this layer, I mostly stipple it into place along the flat plates, since I feel like trying to add a bit of texture now and still want it heavy enough to bring that red back. After it had dried, 
it was still feeling a bit too Christmassy. So thought a slight glaze might help. Mixing red ink into the medium and adding some of the metallic to go with it. Then thin it down quite considerably with some water. I use this to glaze over every part of the armor that's this color so far. So even getting it in the shadows. It won't completely cover them as it's too dilute, but should blend them together a bit better with the rest of the red ink and metallic. And lastly, just some pure red metallic and the red ink together to really get that red hue I'm after along the edges and in the center of all the plates towards my highlight points. One of the secrets to true metal metal is that even though it reflects light, you still have to treat it as if it doesn't and place highlights in the highlight areas and shadows in the shadows still. Since I feel like my green and red experiment didn't fully show the usefulness of mixing paints and metallics, I'm going to do something far more traditional for this lance, using a green, blue, and black mix along with a dark silver base. Starting with a mix of all of them for a base, then gradually mixing in more of the silver to introduce more and more concentration of the metallics. Halfway through the mix, I changed to a lighter silver to continue the layering with it using this to create the lighter tip compared to the base. By controlling the ratio of metallic to pigment, it creates a transition of color without any part missing that true metallic sparkle. So let's recap the three ways of adding some color to true metal metals. First is on top, as either a wash like I did, but you could also paint heavy layers of brown and orange over top to simulate grime and rust. Second was to put the color under it. Make sure that what's under your metallic is fitting for the metallic's color so that the metallic itself doesn't have to do all the work. And lastly, just to mix some metallics into your pigments and use the concentration of the metal to define the gradient you're looking for. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one or just other fun things to do with painting miniatures. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.